As many of you know, the hearing for Richard Allen for the Delphi murder case was held this morning and the judge decided to keep the probable cause affidavit sealed. Now, this is no surprise. There had been a petition circulated started by Libby German's family to keep the probable cause affidavit sealed ostensibly to preserve the evidence for a more robust and effective trial, obviously towards the conviction of Richard Allen and or who else may have been involved in the double homicide of Abby Williams and Liberty German. So today in the probable cause hearing, the prosecutors implied that there is someone else involved, that one of the reasons they do not want to release the probable cause affidavit is because they are still investigating and waiting on more charges for another person or another persons. Now here, Richard Allen's defense attorney, publicly appointed defense attorney, is acting like he read a different probable cause affidavit than the prosecutor's office was talking about today in court. It's very bizarre. Among other things, he insists that we call Richard Allen Rick, that that is what he should be known by, although the public knows him, knows him by Richard. And he also speaks of Richard Allen's wife and says, of course, she's afraid to leave her house. This has affected her deeply. There's absolutely no surprise there. And the defense attorney maintains that what he has read in the probable cause affidavit is absolutely positively not enough evidence to eventually convict his client, Richard Allen, of guilt in the double homicide of Abby Williams and Liberty German. There's a lot of interesting th things said here by Richard Allen's defense attorney. Please leave a comment letting us know what you think. We all want to know what you think. Thanks for watching. Somebody to help us out because he is innocent. He has told us that uh, very emotionally. He has thanked us for our help. Uh, and we are anxious uh, for the public to read this. We're anxious for this thing to get going. And, um, uh, you know, we'll see. And when you guys read the PCA, presuming that the judge grants our motion, you know, you will have to question, is this what happens after five years of an investigation? Is this what it is? We don't have any other evidence. We don't have any discovery. That's all we have. And we are not impressed. When you say, when you say this would help you to get it out, how would, how would that help? Well, you never know what, what person out there might uh, read something and it might ring a bell. It might uh, cause them to uh, point the finger in the direction of the actual uh, killer. Uh, this whole business of two or uh, the two people being involved, uh, the, the conjecture from the prosecutor today was new information for us. I've been on this case, f folks, for five, what, six days. So I don't know a whole lot. We have not seen the evidence. And I, uh, you know, an, another person involved. I mean, that's, that's new news. So that's not reflected in the PCA? Uh, not the PCA that I read. Not the PCA that I read. Do you I have any read. information about the potential involvement of Keegan Klein in this case? I have no information about that. Why do you think it's important for the public to see this probable cause affidavit? Again, I think it's important because uh, Somebody might read something, a line about, you know, you're going to see maybe about a vehicle or about a person or about a time frame, and it might ring a bell, uh, something that they hadn't thought of before. And when they read that, then, you know, they can contact us as, as lawyers. We're getting lots of information from lots of people across the country, especially locally. We don't know what is hoaxes. We don't know what's true. We don't know if it's a podcaster's, you know, uh, opportunity to get in the limelight. We don't know what's real, but we're going to we're going to uh, look at every uh, single uh, person that contacts us. We're going to contact them, everybody, and we're going to figure out if what they know is helpful. What, if anything, has your client Richard Allen said this has impacted him and or his family? Well, obviously, uh, this has impacted Richard and his family tremendously. I mean, his 
His wife is uh, just a wonderful person, and she loves her husband. They've been married for over 30 years. They were basically high school sweethearts. Uh, they love each other, and she fully supports him, but it is devastating. Uh, she's scared. She doesn't want to leave her house. She did leave her house. She, uh, thankfully, uh, is in a little bit better place than she was uh, a month ago, but it's, this is all new to them. Can you say anything about why uh, investigators are focused on your client? You guys will read the uh, probable cause affidavit, and you may wonder why they are uh, focused on our client. We haven't asked you the fundamental question, and that is, your client's the wrong guy? Our client's the wrong guy. And what's the main point that you hope the judge takes away from your argument today? We have nothing to hide, and, you know, it, transparency is important uh, in government. Uh, it may be weird for defense lawyers, I suppose, to, to be arguing that we want things unsealed. But that's uh, how confident we are in our client. That's how confident we are that the evidence uh, contained in the, at least what's written in the probable cause affidavit is nothing for us to worry about. We don't know what other evidence is out there, but we're confident uh, that uh, whatever is out there uh, is not going to be enough uh, to uh, show that our client did anything here. He's confused. He's bewildered. He, Rick, uh, Rick uh, you guys all call him Richard. He actually goes by Rick. Rick is bewildered. He's confused. He has no idea why this uh, is going on. How can an innocent man be accused of a crime like this and have their life upended? You know, that's the kind of stuff that we've talked about uh, with him. And uh, the same can be said for his wife. How can this, an innocent man, be charged, accused, and basically convicted in the court of public opinion is what they say. But what I said to him is, there's plenty of people out there that are supporting you, and we're getting a lot of calls from a lot of people that don't believe that uh, Rick is the is the guy. Should Judge Frangel keep these documents sealed? How do you guys proceed? <laughs> well, I'd, it's, it's like my co-counsel Brad uh, uh, Rosie said: you cannot uh, conduct a, a, a suppression issue in in public uh, without talking about the facts, tiptoeing around the facts is going to be impossible. That's another really terrific reason why these uh, documents need to be unsealed. In America, you don't have to prove that somebody's the wrong guy. They have to prove he's the right guy. Yeah, uh, could you just elaborate on why you say he's the wrong guy? Well, again, I'm early on in this case. I've looked my client in the eye, and he's looked me in the eye, and he's told me what he's told me. I'm innocent. Thank you for helping me out. And uh, we'll see what uh, the evidence looks like. The PCA, the probable cause affidavit, we are not impressed. Can you tell us more about what the prosecutor said regarding a second person who might be involved? <laughs> well, well, that was news to us. So what, whoever was in that room uh, listening to the prosecutor talk about a second person, that's news to us. I, you know, I, I got to tell you, I don't know a whole lot about this case. I'm learning and learning and learning. There's people that have podcasts and all kinds of stuff that know, seemingly think that they know more about this case. And certainly, uh, you know, we're, I, I'm glad that I'm coming into this case without a whole lot of knowledge about anything. I don't have any preconceived notions. I don't like to look at evidence uh, with uh, some preconceived notion of what it might mean. I don't know what anything means, but this second person business, that there's another person involved, I think somebody had heard, I had heard something on a podcast. Somebody had told me that there's a podcast or a, a news article that says something about that. And then there was somebody, you mentioned the name of somebody. I don't know who. Keegan Klein. Keegan Klein. I mean, you may think I'm, you know, an attorney. How do I not know who Keegan Klein is? I've heard the name, but I don't know who Keegan Klein is. You know, I don't know if, if that's, that might be the guy that did. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about anything other than.